Hey, hello. Welcome to the Orchard Online. Whether it's morning, afternoon, nighttime, middle of the night, whenever it is that you're watching this, I'm just glad that you're with us. I encourage you, connect with me, connect with the Orchard. Any questions, prayer requests, thoughts, ideas, send it to the Orchard at or info at orchardnh.org. And I'll get a hold of that and I'll be able to respond back. Again, info at orchardnh.org. And I encourage you to do that. Find your Bible, open your device, Old Testament, Isaiah 66, New Testament, 1 Peter chapter 5. Let's prepare ourselves now to hear from God's Word. In this series of teachings called Experiencing God, Everyday Spirituality, we looked at different ways that we can experience our Heavenly Father and that in everyday ways of living life, we can experience Him and have a spirituality that is just nuts and bolts, how we live life, how we do life. So we begin with the most simple and the most universal of human experiences. We begin with breathing and every breath being a prayer to our Heavenly Father, every breath being an expression of thanks and praise to God for the life that we have. And then also the power of breathing as it calms us down, makes us able to hear the voice of God and to do the things of God. So we began with breathing. We talked about living with thanksgiving awakening to the day and being grateful that God has given us another opportunity to know Him, to love Him, to serve Him. We talked about growing by gardening, getting dirt underneath our fingernails, getting our hands into the creation, working the soil and the soil working us, growing by gardening. Sharing a meal with others, something we do uh, two or three, some four times a day. Sharing a meal with others and how we join Jesus at the table where he invites us to sit with him as he's present there with others and sharing a meal together. Last week we talked about parenting with singing because our father, Zephaniah, Old Testament prophet Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17, he says, God sings over us. He sings over his people with great, giddy, excited joy for his people. Our Father sings over us, and we can do that with our children, our grandchildren as well. Today we talk about serving with humility. What does it mean to follow Jesus, to experience God, to have an everyday spirituality where I enter into the day with this attitude of serving others with humility. I'm excited to explore this with you. And so as we jump in today, let's, let's hear this definition of humility. It comes to us from C.S. Lewis, great Christian author, uh, inspiration for many books, movies, other things. C.S. Lewis says this, humility is not thinking less of yourself, it's thinking of yourself less. Humility is not thinking less of yourself, eating a big old piece of humble pie. No, humility is thinking, is thinking of yourself less. Putting others in front of yourself before you. So today we'll explore, what does it mean to serve others with humility? Let's get some perspective from Scripture, beginning first with Isaiah chapter 66 and then 1 Peter chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 66, God is speaking. He says, My hand made all these things so that they came into being. This is the Lord's declaration. 
I will look favorably on this kind of person, one who is humble, submissive in spirit, and trembles at my word. And then from 1 Peter chapter 5, all of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another because God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God so that he may exalt you at the proper time. Join me in prayer. Let's pray together. Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts, may they be acceptable in your sight, Lord Jesus, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. What does it mean to serve with humility? What does it mean to have the call of the creator? And God saying, this is the person that he looks upon with favor. Hold on, what does it mean to have the power of Christ within us, which shapes us, which molds us for serving others? And then, as a person experiencing God, everyday spirituality, <clears throat> what's my purpose? How do I serve with humility? So let's begin first with the call of the Creator. Again, Isaiah writes and he says, My hand made all these things, and so they came into being. This is the Lord's declaration. I will look favorably on this kind of person. Oh, if that doesn't catch your attention, I don't know what else would. God says, this is what I'm looking for. This is it. This I'm going to look with favor on this kind of person. One who is humble, submissive in spirit, and trembles at his word. The call of the Creator is one that, as I think about it these days, in the 21st century, when there's a great deal of discussion in our world today about how did we get here? How did this universe, which is immense, greater than the mind can fathom, how did it get here? You know, I'll tell you my, for myself, I'm an old earth creationist. In other words, it means I, I, I believe that God created the heavens and the earth, that God created the universe. Uh, but I, I don't think he did it recently. I think he did it billions of years ago. And I think he has used processes and means, and, and he has brought about what we see today. And I still think that God is still out there creating. He is still expanding this universe of ours. He's making it greater, even greater than it is now. And I believe that God's hand is throughout all of it. God creating the universe. I believe that. I believe I'm a creation made by God. But I would say to you that if, if we're really not much more than well-dressed apes, you know, sophisticated monkeys, then the idea of serving others just doesn't work because others would be a, a block to us. They would be in the way of getting what we want. And yet, as a person who believes that God is the creator, and he says, I'm creating you in my image. You are to be my image bearers. You are to show the world what I'm like. I want to hear, if God says, that's the person I'm looking for, that's the image bearer I'm looking for, one who is humble, one who is submissive in spirit, and one who trembles at his word. That's where I want to be. I invite you to consider being there as well. Hey, understand this, please. Throughout the, the years and the centuries of following Jesus, the people of God have understood how powerfully important the call of God is upon our lives to walk humbly with him to live out our lives in a way that is humble. In fact, there was a, ben, uh, a monk in the 6th century AD 
Saint Benedict, we call him. Saint Benedict used an illustration from the Old Testament about a ladder that was going from heaven to earth and the angels going up and down the ladder. And so Benedict used that picture of a ladder and he described the ladder of humility. There's 12 steps to it. You can Google it and find it. I'm not going to talk about them today. But in those 12 steps of humility, on this ladder of humility, Benedict tells us with this, the way to go up the ladder towards God is to go with humility. The way to descend the ladder to go away from God is to take steps of pride instead. So to be a person who is humble, to be a person who is submissive in spirit, to be a person who trembles at God's word, is to be a person living everyday spirituality with a sense of reverence, a sense of awe, a sense of wonder that the Creator has made me, the Creator has shaped me, the Creator has said, uh, you're my image bearer. Now go and show the world what God is like by serving others with humility. A book that has had a huge impact on my life. I read it early on as a follower of Jesus. Small little book called Humility by Andrew Murray, written back at the turn of the 19th century, Andrew Murray spoke about what it means to be a person created and called to serve God through humility. This is what he writes. When we see that humility is something infinitely deeper than contrition, just feeling bad about stuff, and accept it as our participation in the life of Jesus, we shall begin to learn that it is our true nobility. Our true place is image bearers. And that to prove it in being servants of God, servants of all, is the highest fulfillment of our destiny as men and women created in the image of God. I greatly encourage you to find Andrew Murray's little book called Humility. There's a reference there. You can find it at the bottom of our notes today. It's a little book named Humility. If you search it, you can find a PDF version of the book. You don't even have to pay for it. You just go online and get it and begin to read it. Digest what he talks about. As those called by God, called by the Creator to bear His image to the world around us, we do so with humility. The vast universe. God says, go out and show it to the world in humility. We go about it believing that we're following Jesus and following his footsteps as we do this. So the call of the Creator as image bearers is to go out and to show the world what God is like by serving others. And then we have the power of Christ within us. Peter writes, again, let's hear from Scripture, all of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another because God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God so that he may exalt you at the proper time. Do you hear between the two verses, Isaiah 66 and 1 Peter chapter 5? In Isaiah 66, it says, this is the person that God looks favorably upon, the person who humbles themselves, who's contrite in spirit, who trembles at his word. And here's the person that God opposes. Huh. I don't know which side of that equation you want to be on, but I want to be on the side of the equation where God is giving me favor, not against me giving me favor. And that place is to humble myself, to understand that God gives his grace to me as I humble myself. How do we take on humility? How do we go from being a person who's proud and arrogant to a person who's humble? Well, there's, there's reason for us to believe that the 
that the very person of Peter, who wrote these words in 1 Peter chapter 5, we can see in his life a transformation that took place that really does give us some answers to the question, how do I go from being a proud, arrogant person to a person serving with humility? First of all, let's understand this. Jesus met Peter by the Sea of Galilee where Peter and his family had been uh, fishermen for a, a long time. Uh, Peter has a business there. He's a fisherman. He's got boats, at least two of them, and, and, and he's working the water. He knows fishing like the back of his hand. But Jesus, a carpenter, a worker of stone, a technon, he's called, a, 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 a craftsman, somebody who worked with his hands, tells Peter the fisherman, okay, go out a little deeper into the water and put your nets down here. <laughs> Peter says, you tell him, hey, you how to fish? I fished all night and I haven't caught anything. But because you said it, Jesus, I'll do what you say. And so Peter pushes out a little bit further. There's other theirs with him, with him to help. And they cast the nets down into the water and they catch a huge amount of fish. So per Peter's first encounter with Jesus is he lets Jesus, the carpenter, the technon, the worker with his hands, how to fish. And he learns that maybe there's something greater in Jesus than there is in myself. Maybe there's something in Jesus, a wisdom that's greater than my experience. And so Peter begins to be shaped by the Christ, by Jesus, to be a man of humility. He's called by Jesus to follow him, and he says, someday, Peter, you'll know, fish, uh, not for little floppy creatures out of the water, but people, you'll be a fisher of people. So Peter begins to follow. And Peter quickly becomes the spokesman for that group, that closest group of followers of Jesus. We call them the 12, the apostles. And among those 12, there's a, a unique moment where Jesus has taken them aside. He, he's invited them to go off by themselves. He's in the farthest reaches of the northern part of Israel. He's out in, in no man's land. There, he asked the disciples, who do the people say that I am? And they give questions, or they give answers back and say, no, this is who we think you are. That's what the people say you are. But then Jesus says, who do you say that I am? And Peter responds, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Oh, Peter, you got it. You got it. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Peter could be proud. He could be holding up. He said, man, I got it. I did it. And in the next few words, Jesus says, all right, you got it, Peter. That's who I am. And because I am the Christ, the son of God, I'm going to go to Jerusalem and I'm going to die on a Roman cross. I'm going to give my life for the people of God. And Peter says, it'll never happen. So Peter goes from being the great spokesman of God. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. And in the next breath, Jesus says to him, get behind me, Satan. You are not of the things of God. Because Peter couldn't see how a crucified Christ could be king. But Peter needed to humble himself and to see Jesus for what Jesus is, not the Christ, not the king of Peter's making, but that Jesus who makes himself known to us. So Peter the fisherman becomes a follower and still he's corrected. His, his pride is everywhere. And Jesus continues to correct his pride. But the fisherman and, and the follower, uh, Peter becomes the fool. At the end of Jesus' earthly ministry, just before he's going to the cross, he's with his disciples on that night we know where Jesus shared a meal with his disciples. And he began instructions about how to live out the kingdom. And then he said these words, which must have cut like a knife into the heart of Peter. One of you is gonna betray me. They look at each other, is it me? Is it me? And certainly when it gets to Peter, he looks to Jesus and says, Lord, is it me? 
And Jesus says, yeah, Peter. Before the rooster crows three times, you will deny me. Before the rooster crows, I'm sorry, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. Uh, the rooster crowing is a timestamp, uh, meaning that uh, before the night is done, Peter, you will deny me three times. And Peter says, if everybody else leaves you alone, I will be there. And the fool that is Peter, the fool that is me, makes a promise he cannot keep. And Jesus shapes him and molds him, teaches him to be a man of humility. Christian author Ken Boer writes this about Peter. The man who called himself a witness of the sufferings of Christ was not there when Jesus was hanging on the cross. He was hiding in fear. The man who calls us to be eager to serve remained seated while Jesus washed the disciples' feet. The man who tells us that we should be clear-minded and self-controlled so that we can pray fell asleep while Jesus was sweating blood. The man who tells us to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God proudly boasted that he would never deny Jesus. But Jesus continued to work with Peter and Jesus will continue to work with you to shape out of you and, and to make you a person of humility. And not to think more, not to think less of yourself, but to think of yourself less. That's what Jesus is about as we follow after him. And, and we are called by Jesus to serve with humility, to be a person every day, spirituality, every day, entering into the day with an attitude of looking, whom can I serve today? How can I be used of Jesus in helping others this day? And to understand that that's an expression of being created by God as an image bearer. That's, that's an outward working of being shaped by Jesus to be used of him. And to find my real purpose in serving others with humility. That is a great call upon your life. That's a great purpose for your life, to serve others with humility. Again, a great quote from a sister in Christ, Teresa of Avila. She says this, Christ has no body now on earth but yours, no hands but yours, no feet but yours. You are the eyes through which Christ's compassion is to look out to the earth. Yours are the feet by which he is to go about doing good and yours are the hands by which he is to bless us now. Amen, she writes. And let me add to her words this invitation to you. To be a person who experiences God, that has an everyday spirituality of serving with humility, to know that the call of the Creator is, this is what I'm made for. To understand, this is the power of Christ within me and changing me as I willingly submit myself to other people and to serving other people, I submit myself to Christ. And then to hear the call to serve with humility and to see the path before me with the footprints of Jesus on it, serving other people. It will be, I believe, the greatest joy you will ever experience is serving with humility. Pray with me, please. Lord Jesus, oh, thank you for showing us what it is 
to live out fully before our Heavenly Father and to live the life of God our Creator and to do it in a way that puts others before us as you did. So Lord Jesus, by your Spirit, strengthen us to be a people who serve you with humility. And together God's people said, Amen. Amen. Lord bless you this day.